In today's class of parallel programming, we'll be learning about high performance computing. High performance computing is nothing but a type of computing technique. So in this type, uh, in this computation, we'll go for using advanced technologies or advanced uh, techniques, which will help you to work on a massive amount of data or huge amount of data. And the computations will be done in less amount of time. So the normal calculations, whatever you do it on a desktop, they cannot meet this. So high performance computing cannot be done on a standalone system. You'll be performing it on a massive uh, data, which in a limited amount of time. And when you see this history of high performance computing, uh, it has been ranging from sequential processing to shared memory and finally to your distributed memory. So initially, uh, when you go for sequential processing, we had only one CPU and we were performing the operation. So as the technologies have been evolved, what we have done on a single CPU, we have gone for dual core, right? Dual core processor where both of them are using the shared memory. And coming to the latest technologies now, you can even go for a distributed architecture where uh, the systems can be on the same network or they can be on a different network and still the communication takes place. So in addition to the CPU, whatever we are using now, in high performance computing, we'll not go for sequential processing, rather we go for parallelism to be implemented. And you all know if I want parallelism to be implemented, we rely upon a GPU because it has more number of cores when compared to your normal CPU. So this is how the high performance computing has been evolved. So the uh, changes in the technologies had uh, laid, led to this particular computation. Now, when you go for high performance computing, we'll see the different uh, parameters that can be used in your high performance computing. One is nothing but your heterogeneous computing. As the word implies, heterogeneous means different, which are not similar. So when you go for different computations, I'll give a program to my system where I have a combination of a CPU as well as a GPU. So depending on the code you are writing in this particular program, if it is a serial computation to be done, it the work will be taken by the CPU. And if you have any part of the code which is to be implemented parallelly, it will be assigned to your GPU. So heterogeneous computing as it implies, it's a combination of your serial processing plus your parallel processing. So your program will not be totally serial execution or will not be totally parallel. It will be a combination of it. And depending on the statements, whatever you're writing, it will be either executed by the CPU or by the GPU. And now what are the programming paradigms we'll be using if I want to achieve this high performance computing? As we have seen earlier, we were using SIMD in vectorization. So what we were doing in vectorization, uh, we were using the single instruction on multiple data. But when you go for high performance techniques, so here when I go for single instruction multiple data, a single thread, only one thread will be making to work on multiple data. If you want even for faster execution than this, we go for SIMT, which is single instruction, multiple threads. So your operation will be implemented by multiple threads rather than a single thread. So this is how you get more amount of computation that can be done in less amount of time. So if you could just see the example for this. So here, this will be implemented by one thread. This will be implemented by other threads. So these are all the multiple threads, but you are making it to operate on different data, single instruction, multiple threads, and single instruction here, you are just going for addition. So when I go for SIMD, I'm repeating it again. SIMD will make use of only one thread to perform all these operations, whereas in SIMT, we'll go for using multiple threads. And when we are talking about a CPU and a GPU, as you all know, CPU is a processing unit and you, this GPU, we call it as an auxiliary device, which will support your CPU in performing your executions. So when you just see the internal architecture of your CPU, if I go for a quad core processor, we have four ALUs which will be performing your operations. You provide your input, perform the operation and you get your output. Coming to the terminology of your GPU, here you have only one control unit and one cache unit, whereas here you have multiple cache units and multiple control units, which can take care of performing your operations. And these are all the cores. So instead of calling them as ALUs, we'll be using the term as core, or we can even call it as processing elements. 
So basically, when you go for a CPU, CPU will be generally used for achieving the applications of low latency. So when you when we use a term latency, latency is nothing but the amount of the time gap between your request and the response. So this time gap, we generally call it as a latency. And throughput is nothing but the number of instructions or the programs you are executing any number of it can be either an instruction or a program executed in unit time when i say a unit time this unit time can be one millisecond it can be even one hour right so when you want higher throughput when you want more number of instructions to be executed in less amount of time we generally rely upon your gpu when you want a quicker response low latency means you are getting the output in less amount of time so we go for cpu so cpus are generally used for low latency and gpus are used for higher throughput this is just an example for your nvidia uh, gpu architecture so this is one of the manufacturer nvidia is one of the manufacturer of your gpu if you could see this are your streaming processes so streaming process zero streaming uh, streaming multiprocessor sm stands for streaming multiprocessor you have n number so in other terms we can even call them as compute units this is compute unit, unit 0 compute unit 1 and compute unit 2 and each of the compute unit internally has multiple processing elements so you call them as cuda codes we can even call it as processing elements and each of the compute unit will have its own memory depending upon your applications and all the compute units can share three types of memories that is your cache memory global memory and constant memory we have already seen the different types of memories that are being associated so this is a general architecture pertaining to your nvidia gpu now uh, what are the programming approaches so when i want uh, execution to be done on a gpu not on a cpu so when you go for your cpu you will be using any of your high level language programs and write a code and you make your cpu to work similarly since the gpu is a device you want some program to be written and given to this device so that you get the corresponding output in less amount of time so what type of programming approaches we generally use here starting with instead of writing it from the scratch we depend upon the existing libraries so if i just go for using the packages or the existing libraries you all know it is very easy and it will be performed very well the other one can be you start it you start writing and use some particular code which is available so here you, you implement some amount of coding techniques by yourself so you can go for you using open accelerator so app open accelerator is an example where you can use your compiler directives other than the library and the compiler directives you have other approach where you can use any of the programming languages and implement it on a gpu so when you go for your cuda in this we either go for using c c plus plus or python code where you make your gpu to work as we have seen this cuda cuda is nothing but it is a programming platform it's a platform which will help the user to write the program using any of your high level language so that it will be given to your gpu so when you write a program in cuda you have general c uh, c instructions or c plus plus instruction which will be given to your cpu so gpu will first check whether it is serial execution instruction or parallel execution instruction if it is serial execution instruction the control will be given to your cpu if the instructions are to be executed parallelly, the control will be transferred back to your GPU. So if you just uh, see the process of this CUDA processing flow, generally the CPU will call it as a host and this GPU, whatever we are using, this GPU, we call it as a device. The code written pertaining to your CPU, we call it as a host code and the code pertaining to your GPU, we call it as a device code. So you need to have some interaction between your CPU and your GPU. So first, the CPU will copy the data. So whatever data you want to have, this will be copied. So you send the CPU will transfer the data to your GPU. And then CPU will again give the instructions also. So data and instructions are passed to your CUDA, I mean GPU. The third important step is after receiving the data and the instructions, it executes the code in parallel. And once it is done, it copies the result back into your main memory so main memory is pertaining to your cpu and memory this is a memory related to your gpu so cpu will first copy the data into your main memory 
of your CPU where the transaction, I mean, you can pass the data between your GPU and your CPU. Data and instructions both are provided to the GPU. It executes it and provides the final result. So these are the four important steps that are to be used when you want a CUDA program to be executed on a GPU. So in the next class, we'll be seeing how to write a program in CUDA and how to execute it on a GPU.